Right now, rivers across the world are quietly carrying diamonds, emeralds, and gemstones worth thousands of dollars, sometimes millions. And most people walk straight past them without ever realizing it. These stones aren't hidden deep underground. They aren't locked behind mine shafts or heavy machinery. They're moving freely, shaped by water, disguised as ordinary pebbles, waiting in places most people never look twice. This isn't speculation, it's geology. For millions of years, rivers have acted as nature's most efficient sorting machines. They break down mountains, rip gemstones from their host rock, and concentrate the heaviest, most durable stones into riverbeds, bends, and gravel bars. What remains behind is not random debris. It's a carefully filtered collection of Earth's most resilient treasures. By the end of this video, you'll know which river flows carry diamonds, which ones hide emeralds, and which valuable stones are almost always ignored because they look completely ordinary. 1. Gold Gold is the true king of river treasure, not because rivers create it, but because rivers expose it. Because gold is extremely dense, moving water strips away lighter material and leaves gold behind in very specific places. Inside river bends, behind large boulders, in cracks in bedrock, and along heavy black sand zones. These same locations often hold other valuable minerals. Where you find river gold, you are usually standing in a gemstone concentration zone. Sapphires, garnets, zircon, and even diamonds commonly settle nearby. In the United States, river gold is most often found in California, Alaska, Montana, Colorado, and Oregon, where rivers cut through gold-bearing geology. Many of these rivers still produce gold today, especially after floods. Beyond the U.S., gold-bearing rivers also exist across parts of Africa, South America, and Australia. Not every river contains gold, but any river flowing through gold-rich rock has the potential to carry it. Gold found in rivers is called alluvial gold. It forms when gold erodes out of hard rock and is transported by water, appearing as dust, flakes, or nuggets. Gold still locked inside rock is known as hard rock or load gold and must be mined before it can be recovered. Pure gold is worth the same no matter where it comes from, but alluvial gold is often naturally pure and large river nuggets can sell for more than their melt value. Many historic gold discoveries weren't just about metal. They were early signs that rivers were carrying far more value than anyone realized. 2. Corundum Corundum is one of the most important gemstones carried by rivers, and like diamonds, it survives long journeys because of its extreme hardness. On the Mohs scale, corundum ranks 9, second only to diamond, which allows it to resist erosion while traveling downstream. Corundum appears in many colors. The red variety is called ruby, while blue stones are known as sapphire. Other colors, yellow, pink, orange, and even green, are part of the broader sapphire family. These stones are often eroded from host rocks and concentrated in riverbeds, gravel bars, and behind boulders where heavy minerals settle. In the United States, corundum can be found in rivers such as the Mississippi, North Carolina's Yadkin River, Montana's Missouri and Yellowstone Rivers, and parts of Idaho and Maine. Globally, rivers in Sri Lanka, Madagascar, Myanmar, and parts of Africa are also famous for gem-quality corundum. Uncut river-worn corundum often looks scratched, cloudy, or dull, which causes most people to overlook it. But once cut and polished, corundum reveals its true brilliance, making it one of the most valuable and sought-after gemstones in the world. Like diamonds, river corundum may look ordinary at first, but its hardness, color, and rarity make it a hidden treasure that can be worth thousands of dollars per carat. 3. Diamond diamonds are not born in rivers, but rivers are where many of them are found. Their incredible hardness, 10 on the Mohs scale, allows them to survive long journeys without losing shape or internal structure, making rivers perfect natural conveyors. Diamonds form deep in volcanic rock and are gradually released through erosion. Once freed, rivers transport them downstream, polishing their edges and depositing them in bends, gravel traps, and heavy mineral zones. Over time, these riverbeds become natural treasure troves. In the United States, diamonds can occasionally be found in rivers in Arkansas, Colorado, and Montana, where erosion exposes ancient volcanic or kimberlite sources. Globally, 
Famous diamond-bearing rivers run through Brazil, India, parts of Africa, and Australia. Alluvial diamonds in rivers often look cloudy, rounded, and unremarkable, easily mistaken for quartz, glass, or even ordinary stones. This deceptive appearance has caused countless historic diamonds to be overlooked before their true value was recognized. Despite their humble look, diamonds carried by rivers are among the most valuable gemstones in the world, with some of the largest and rarest discoveries originating from alluvial deposits rather than mines. 4. Fossils Rivers don't create fossils. They reveal them. For millions of years, ancient animals and plants were buried under layers of sediment that slowly turned into fossil-bearing rock. As rivers cut through these layers, erosion releases fossils and carries them downstream or exposes them along riverbanks and gravel bars. That's why fossils are so commonly found in rivers, especially after floods, heavy rains, or seasonal changes that strip away soil and expose older layers beneath. River systems can contain a wide range of fossils, including dinosaur bones and teeth, Ice Age mammal remains, fossilized shells, ammonites, shark teeth, and petrified wood. Some of these fossils are tens of millions of years old. In the United States, fossils are frequently found along rivers in Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, Florida, and Texas, where rivers cut through ancient marine and prehistoric land deposits. Globally, major fossil finds have come from river systems in parts of Africa, South America, and Asia. Most river fossils don't look impressive at first. They're heavy, dark, mineralized, and often mistaken for ordinary rocks. Many of the most important fossil discoveries were made by people who simply noticed that a stone looks slightly different from everything else around it. Some river fossils can be extremely valuable, especially rare or well-preserved specimens, while others hold enormous scientific importance even if they're never sold. It's important to note that fossil collecting laws vary and many fossil sites are protected. Rivers quietly expose pieces of ancient life, mixing them among pebbles, gravel, and sand, which is why some of Earth's oldest stories are still lying in plain sight. 5. Emerald Emeralds may appear fragile, but rivers can still carry them, concentrating these rare gems in specific areas. Because emeralds are softer than corundum and diamonds, they don't travel as far and often remain near their original source. In the United States, emeralds can be found in rivers in North Carolina, Montana, and parts of Idaho, where erosion exposes veins of emerald-bearing rock. Globally, rivers in Colombia, Zambia, Madagascar, and parts of Africa are famous for emerald finds, often uncovered after seasonal floods or heavy rains. Alluvial emeralds usually appear as dull, fractured, or cloudy green stones which causes most people to overlook them. But even imperfect river emeralds can be valuable once cut and polished. Rivers quietly reveal these hidden treasures, carrying emeralds downstream while disguising their worth. What seems like an ordinary green pebble could be a high-value gem waiting to be recognized. 6. Petrified Wood Petrified wood is not just stone. It's ancient forest frozen in time. Millions of years ago, Trees were buried by sediment and volcanic ash. Over time, groundwater rich in minerals slowly replaced the wood's organic structure with silica, turning it into solid stone while preserving the original wood grain. Rivers don't create petrified wood, they expose it. As rivers cut through ancient layers, pieces of petrified wood are released and carried downstream or left behind in gravel bars and riverbanks. Floods and seasonal erosion are often what bring these pieces to the surface. In the United States, petrified wood is commonly found in river systems across Arizona, Utah, Texas, Oregon, and Wyoming. Globally, river finds also occur in parts of Africa, South America, and Asia. River-worn petrified wood often looks like ordinary rock at first, but its wood-like texture, visible growth rings, and heavy weight set it apart. Some pieces display stunning colors caused by minerals like iron, copper, and manganese. Certain specimens are highly collectible and valuable, especially large, colorful, or well-preserved pieces. However, many petrified wood locations are protected, and collecting may be restricted or illegal. Rivers quietly release these ancient remains, blending them into gravel and sand, which is why entire prehistoric forests 
can still be hiding in plain sight. 7. Jade Jade is not formed in rivers, but rivers are where many jade discoveries happen. Its value comes from exceptional toughness rather than hardness, allowing it to survive long journeys as moving water destroys weaker stones. Jade forms deep in metamorphic rock and is released through erosion, then carried downstream and deposited in bends, gravel bars, and heavy stone zones. In the United States, jade has been found in rivers in California, Wyoming, Alaska, and parts of the Pacific Northwest, especially after floods expose fresh gravel. Globally, jade-bearing rivers exist across parts of Asia, South America, and Africa. River jade often appears smooth, dull, and ordinary, easily mistaken for common stone. Yet some of the most valuable jade ever discovered came not from mines, but from riverbeds. 8. Garnet Garnets are classic river gemstones, heavy, durable, and incredibly common in alluvial deposits. Because garnets are dense and hard, rivers naturally concentrate them in the same places as gold inside bends, black sand layers, and gravel bars. Over time, lighter material washes away, leaving behind deep red, orange, purple, or brown crystals. In the United States, garnets are frequently found in rivers in Idaho, New York, North Carolina, Montana, and California. Many historic gold prospectors unknowingly pan garnets alongside gold. Most river garnets look dark, rough, and unremarkable often mistaken for reddish gravel or broken glass. But when cut, some varieties become valuable gemstones used in fine jewelry and abrasives. Finding garnets in a river is often a sign that heavier and more valuable minerals may also be nearby. 9. Quartz Varieties Quartz is one of the most common minerals in rivers, but certain varieties can be surprisingly valuable. As rivers erode quartz veins from surrounding rock, Crystals are released and carried downstream. Heavier and more durable pieces settle in gravel beds and along riverbanks. In the United States, quartz varieties are commonly found in rivers across Arkansas, Colorado, North Carolina, Georgia, and California. Amethyst appears purple, citron yellow, and smoky quartz ranges from gray to deep brown. River-worn quartz crystals often lose their sharp points, making them look like cloudy pebbles. This causes many people to overlook them entirely. While quartz is common, large, clear, or richly colored specimens can be highly collectible and valuable, especially when naturally tumbled smooth by River Action 10. Topaz. Topaz is a durable gemstone that rivers often carry, able to survive long journeys without breaking, while lighter stones are washed away. It forms an igneous and metamorphic rock and is gradually released through erosion. Rivers transport topaz, concentrating it in bends, gravel bars, and heavy mineral zones alongside gold and other dense gemstones. In the United States, topaz can be found in rivers in Utah, Colorado, and Maine. Globally, rivers in Brazil, Sri Lanka, and parts of Africa are known to carry topaz as well. River-worn topaz often looks dull, small, or colorless at first glance, making it easy to overlook. Yet when cut and polished, its golden, pink, or blue hues reveal a highly valuable gemstone. What appears to be an ordinary pebble could actually be a piece of topaz, quietly carried and polished by the river over centuries. The next time you walk along a riverbank, a gravel bar, or even a dried-up riverbed, slow down and look more closely at the stones beneath your feet. What appears ordinary may have traveled hundreds of kilometers, shaped by pressure, time, and forces far older than human history. Every smooth pebble carries the memory of mountains that no longer exist and geological events that shaped the planet long before the first civilizations appeared. Rivers do not rush their work. They move patiently, endlessly sorting the Earth's hardest and most beautiful materials from everything else. While softer rocks are ground into sand and washed away, gemstones endure, hidden in gravel, tucked into cracks in bedrock and carried downstream season after season. Most of them will never be noticed. They will remain unseen, silently moving with the current, waiting for the rare moment when someone stops and looks closer. And that moment matters, because every great gemstone discovery begins the same way, not with advanced equipment or deep mines, 
but with curiosity, with someone willing to question what others ignore. Someone who understands that the earth does not place its greatest treasures in obvious places. If this video changed the way you see rivers, stones, or the ground beneath your feet, take a moment to show your support. Liking the video helps this kind of documentary content reach more people who appreciate the hidden side of geology. Subscribing ensures you won't miss future explorations into gemstones, rare minerals, and the surprising places they come from. And if you've ever found an unusual stone, crystal, or heavy pebble near a river, or if you've wondered whether something ordinary might actually be valuable, share your story in the comments. Every discovery starts with a question, and sometimes the best insights come from those who are simply paying attention. Rivers don't just move water, they move history, wealth, and beauty shaped over millions of years. And somewhere just beyond what the eye easily sees, the next extraordinary discovery is already waiting, quietly resting beneath ordinary stones, ready for the person who knows to look.